Welcome back to Media Week. Let's get a check on the media sector's performance on the share market this week. We're joined by Evan Lucas from IG. Evan, great to have your company on the show. Let's talk about um, APN News and Media today because mm -hmm. we've been hearing uh, stories about News Corp acquiring 15%. Tell us about it. Yep. Yeah, they certainly have. It's, it's a lot of news coming out of APN this week. It's been quite an interesting one. So they have now moved themselves from having a 4.9% stake up to 14.9% on the back of a block trade that's been done this week. It is quite an interesting situation because there is also talk that they want to continue to extend that current reach that they have inside APN. They obviously really want to get their hands on the regional papers they've got in there. Also continue to diversify and users' reach in that sort of outdoor space and also with some of the radio networks they have. So interesting move there. It certainly comes back on what we saw this week where Alan Gray, being what was the largest shareholder, put a 2% cut on his position. It was all down to the fact that it was getting a little bit bloated on their current sort of fund balance sheet they needed to move down. But it just shows you there is a lot of interest in a share that's appreciated 50% in 12 months. What about the rest of the media space in terms of these media law reforms? We've been hearing a lot of discussions mm -hmm. about it. Any impact on the, on the share prices this week? Uh, a little bit. There was certainly jostling going on and obviously what happened at the, at the start of this week when we did see Rupert Murdoch have a fairly reasonable swipe at Malcolm Turnbull with what is now basically looks like the start of the re rescinding of those reach rules, particularly 9, 7 and 10 have all started to shift up higher. There's also a lot of interest going in Southern Cross Prime and Win Now, obvious reason there is that the tie-up's been mooted midway through last year now actually have traction considering the government is moving away. So there is jostling going on. There is certainly expectations that once these deals come through, there will be a huge amount of tie-ups between the regional and obviously metro players and what effect that will have on the share price is obviously likely to be to the upside. All right, Evan, we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot, as always. Thanks, guys. Evan Lucas there from IG with his Media Insights. Back to James Manning now, our co-host, uh, editor and publisher of Media Week in the studio with us. James, on those media reforms, we, we've been hearing a lot about them and then they've sort of dropped off over the past few days. What do you make of it? Yeah, look, I wouldn't be surprised if they disappear as quickly as they came back on the, <laughs> on the horizon, you know. I mean, we asked Andrew Maiden the other week, is it... Does the media need to get their act together? And he said, no, well, the industry needs to, you know, the owners shouldn't be on them. But, but if the media is so vocal about what they want, I think probably you know, it would make sense if they could get together and present some sort of mm. united front. That's probably you're asking for the impossible. I'm sure there. we haven't heard but the end of it, though. They just need to help sort out. There's just so many you know, divergent uh, yeah. opinions and views. It's just, you just want to, probably nothing's ever going to come. Well, speaking of those uh, reformers, we've been hearing a few media deals through the week, but also this discussion about 10 networks still up in the air. Yeah, look, uh, the latest development is that maybe Foxtel and Discovery will become an investor in the network, if you like, um, in return for some equity. Um, they think that could probably get across. Look, there's been so many different things. You know, mm. Bruce Gordon was going to do some. They're going to come in. So who knows until we hear something official. There's just, there's just chatter, I guess. But um, no real developments about instead, instead of making a takeover, they might just become a, a, you know, an equity investor, a partner, give 10 a bit more cash. Saga continues. All right, let's talk Telstra as well, because they're making a, an investment into the broadcast services space. This is obviously part of their strategy going forward. Uh, taking over Globecast Australia, what do they do? Yeah, look, they help. Uh, broadcast facilities, I guess, like people like Sky News, mm. they bring their signals in from overseas, they send, send their signals out. So for a sports broadcasters, uh, free-to-air networks, subscription TV channels, very niche um, big companies that have their own, run their own uh, video network. So anybody who needs bandwidth, uh, Globecast can bring them from anywhere around Australia. They developed uh, Globecam, the little the mini camera that's now used in a lot of sports on, on racing cars, on sort of football matches, just to take the uh, viewer closer to the action. Uh, it's been owned by, part owned by France Telecom. They own uh, Globecast, I think, head offices in uh, Paris. And they've got sort of uh, divisions all around the world. They were... They own, I think, the majority stake in Australia. I'm not sure what split they've got with uh, Telstra, but it's an interesting move for uh, Telstra to get... They're already in this space, mm. but they want uh, a bit more of it. Well, back to the digital space, we were obviously talking about it earlier in the show. We're seeing a group of international news publishers come together to take on... with an adult ring to take on Facebook. What's yeah. this all about? Look, it's... Um they're sick of seeing, you know, Facebook and Google's and they get all the big, suck all the revenues yep. out of the sector, if I guess. They've got individually big audiences, so they think, look, if we combine some of these people, we'll get them together. Now, the consortium includes The Guardian, CNN, uh, FT, The Financial Times, The Economist and Reuters. Mm. And that's sort of, they're calling that the launch group, if you like. Mm. So I think they're very open to, to bring other partners into this. I think it gives them a, a, a global clout 
immediately for something like 100 million people, mm. which is uh, a pretty big deal. Uh, and be just, you know, be interesting to see the commercial response to it, mm. and if it uh, grows beyond this initial group. Could they put a dent into into Facebook with this? Mm. Look, I don't think so, but they might might help keep some money yeah. that, that might, that that they might, might have drift, been losing. drift away, you know, this year or next. Exactly. Well, speaking of digital audiences, we're seeing them continue to grow. This week, uh, Commuter Daily, of course, MX, has released a new app. What does this look like? Yeah, it looks to be a successful uh, newspaper for uh, News Corp in hmm. uh, Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. It's, it's almost like a network edition. They tailor some of the content for specific... But if you ever catch a train or public transport in peak hour, hmm. you'll see everybody in the afternoon reading the... Uh, it's the only afternoon sort of publishing left, really. MX, you'll see them reading it. They want to capture an audience right across the day. Now, this app will uh, let them do that. It's a very younger audience than traditional newspaper readers. They've uh, also done a bit of a refresh of their print mm. product. So, it's, yeah, it'll just work nicely alongside that. Also, speaking of refreshes, AFR has done a refresh of their website. What's behind this move? Yeah, well, they've been working on this for quite a while. Again, it's that move, like we were talking to Robin earlier, about the move to mobile. It's mm. where all your audiences are. The... To be fair, the uh, AFR.com was a little bit um, a little bit sluggish, if you like, mm. particularly on mobile. It wasn't a great experience, and they I would flick you to a dedicated mobile site. There's no dedicated mobile site. It's all just one site now, and it'll it's adaptive, so it'll adapt to whatever platform you go and to view it on. Look, I've been mucking around a little bit this week. It's very quick, loads fast. Quickly. So you're saying yeah. it's faster than yeah. speeds? Yeah. I mean, okay. You might have noticed here if you yep. when you sometimes it took a little while for some of those pages yep. to load on the AFR. Now it's just like that; they come up. So I think they've done a pretty good job. Okay. Um, also, some moves in the media space. We love talking about this. We're seeing a couple of changes. Um, some to moving to News Corp subsidiary Medium Rare. Who's going yeah, look, there? Kirsten Galliott, who we've had on the show in the past, yep. the editor of uh, In Style magazine, uh, part of Seven West Media, mm -hmm. about the last three years. Don't know when she's leaving. They've got a big event coming up, I think it's in May, so I'm not sure if she'll still be around for that, but Medium Rare is a uh, JV with a couple of entrepreneurs, came across from Bauer Media, got some backing from News Corp, big in that sort of content marketing, mm. um, custom publishing, so it's a great job for a Kirsten, and a guy called Rory Callahan, who's been one of the uh, well, not one of the CEOs, but sort of the next rung down. Um, I think the managing director was his title at Shine Australia. He's moving to sc uh, Screen Time. He's going okay. to be the CEO there. So it's a big, uh, big move for Rory. I think he's got to finish off a couple of shows at Shine. He's <laughs> been working on a couple of big programs there for some of their customers, and he'll uh, turn up at Screen Time later in the year. All right, there you have it. Well, let's uh, take a look at some of the ratings now for Week 11, kicking it off with Free Air. And there you have it, My Kitchen Rules, once again, almost a clean slip, sweep of the, of the top five. Yeah, so we only had four episodes this week, so we had to, had to restrict it to four um, there, Ingrid. No, nine news slips in there at uh, number five with their Sunday bulletin. Turning the page to see the rest of the top ten there. Uh, yeah, nine and... ABC shows in yep. that, uh, that oh, that's next cool. five, yeah. Dr yep. Blake, very successful uh, Aussie drama made by December Media for And them. New Tricks new usually tricks, makes yeah. it in. It's going to be, I think the new ones from now on will end up on uh, BBC first, but the ABC's been holding back some of these episodes and they've been, been a huge audience of food. All right, let's take a look at subscription television ratings now for week 11 and, of course, sport taking out the top five spots. Yeah, World Cup cricket. Not long to go now until we get to the uh, final. Yeah. Uh, I think that was the last few games before the final started this week. All right, and turning the page, we'll see uh, some others selling houses Australia. Interesting not to see the housewives in there this week. No, it didn't. And uh, Maddie John's uh, cropping up there on uh, Monday night. One of Fox Sports uh, shows that support their uh, NRL content. Speaking of Fox Sports, uh, they just launched something called Fox Fans league. Yeah, What's this all about? Look, it's going to be, it's, it's video gaming and, okay. they're, and they're, it's going to be a national competition. It's tied in with the new EA Sports as a big gaming developer and look, and the, the gaming industry is massive. It is just a huge business mm. worldwide. And Fox Sports have uh, developed, it's a game, there's going to be a national competition so you know gamers will be able to compete against each other. The final will be shown live on Fox Sports so I think that's a first. So, really? Yeah, For but, gamers? Yeah. But I, I'm not sure whether they'll put down their uh, consoles to watch some guys uh, competing on television. Innovative, but, though, very yeah, innovative. Absolutely. Um, Horse Racing Channel as well turned off a signal last week, leaving Sky Racing. It's now the main, the main one. Yeah, look, it's really hard to explain <laughs> horse racing rights, but it's, it's been a minefield for yeah. uh, over the last few years. But TVN was sort of the... They ran a premium channel, showed all the big Melbourne and... Uh, 
Melbourne and Sydney racing carnivals each Saturday afternoon. So it's a place for people that have a, a casual punt, if you like, and they could watch it all. Now let's uh, moving across to Sky Racing. There's a new Sky Racing channel called Sky Racing World. It's mm. moved to the uh, Foxtel Basic uh, platform, so any Foxtel subscriber can see it now. And they're sort of filling the breach that used to be filled by TVN. Now, Nine Entertainment, I mentioned it earlier in the show as a bit of a teaser, but it's selling its uh, Willoughby headquarters. Yeah, look, there's been a, a long time they've been trying to rezone the property. They've yeah. got a big recorder compound, a campus, whatever out there. So they've got studio space, a lot of uh, office space for, for the Nine Network. It's their Australian headquarters. They've been trying to rezone it for residential. Look, the residents are up on arms on this. If mm. you ever drive through Willy, Willoughby, people used to have signs in there. <laughs> yes, we've all seen those signs, yep. You know, we're against the rezoning. You know, Nine's a big, nasty... Uh, you know, big, big nasty uh, member of the community. We don't like what they're doing. and But they've got the rezone through. It's officially on the market now. It's going to be a lot of terrace houses, a couple of apartment blocks. Wow, OK. And finally, Astra's, of course. It was last week. Um, some of the We haven't spoken about it, though. Some of the yeah, winners. Look, Sky News, a big winner, of course. Uh, Channel of the Year, second <laughs> Had to talk time. About yeah, it. But, uh, ten years since they won it, so it's good to see them back there. Yep. Um, they won, Paul Murray won a couple of awards. David Spears won an award, too. Uh, Fox Sports won a couple of awards. And a great tribute to uh, Brian Walsh in the evening, too. So good to see him recognise. He was one of the originals at Foxtel 20 years ago. Yeah, right. OK, there you have it. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, James, but that does wrap up Media Week. James Manning, our co-host, editor and publisher of Media Week, in the studio with us. That's all we have time for on Media Week. Thanks for your company.